If you were watching other news networks last night, you may have noticed that it took them a while to start covering the terror attack in the UK once it happened. Instead, they spent almost an hour continuing to chase after claims of collusion, you may have heard this before, stop me if you have, between Russia and President Trump. And if you watch those networks over the past couple of weeks, we not recommend that, of course, but if you have, you've seen a never-ending parade of lawmakers, people who've been elected, claiming Russia has seized control of the White House somehow. There is reason to believe that the president's pandering to Russia is endangering our national security, our economy, and our democracy. The cost of the president's ties to Russia cannot be our national security. And if this story is true, I'm afraid that's a price we may pay. I really do believe that much of what you saw coming out of Trump's mouth was a play from Putin's playbook. Now, what do these two topics have in common? They may appear wholly unrelated. Manchester attacks last night and Russia, but they are actually connected. The press's fear-mongering about Russia, its distaste for honestly covering Islamic terror, are related to one another. Because if you thought about it for even a second, and apparently a lot of people here haven't, you'd realize the U.S. may have something to gain by cooperating with Russia in checking radical Islam. Now, to note the obvious, the Russians are not likely to become trusted allies, ever. Russia, like pretty much every other country except for, well, ours, looks out for its own interests first. And sometimes those interests are directly opposed to our interests. That will never change. But on this one matter, radical Islam, Russia has both a shared interest and ample expertise on the subject. They've got a huge Muslim minority, amounting to about 10% of the population, that's higher than any Western European nation. They've had to deal with an Islamist insurgency in Chechnya, as well as multiple terror attacks that have killed hundreds. And of course, they've intervened in Syria. Now, not just to protect President Assad and secure a warm water port, though those are probably goals too, but also to fight Islamists, which they're actively doing, like the Russians or not, they are doing that. In other words, on this one vital question, Russia is aligned with us. Now, you'd think that would be obvious, just as it was obvious to Franklin Roosevelt 80 years ago to make common cause with Joseph Stalin in the fight against the Nazis, and it worked. But no, it's 1953 all over again with the Democratic Party in the McCarthy seat impugning the character of anyone who dares to note the obvious. I know because it's happened to me, agent of Russia that I am. Everyone enjoys a good witch hunt from time to time, but this one appears to be hurting our national security. David Teferi is a former Obama campaign foreign policy advisor. He once worked at the State Department, and I know that he's going to agree with me on this. Let me start with the obvious question. Which is a bigger threat to the U.S., ISIS or Russia? Both are a huge threat. Which is bigger? Well, I think ISIS is a more immediate threat, absolutely. But Russia has a much stronger military. Russia can um, hurt us and hurt U.S. interests all over the world. So we have to worry about both. Hmm. So let me just, I, I, we don't have the graphic because I'm just kind of going here with the facts as they are. We have on the one side ISIS, Islamic terror, Al-Qaeda over the past 15 years. Thousands of Americans have lost their lives, many thousands to those forces. Russia has killed, let me just see, oh, zero Americans. So it's really not even in the same universe, actually, the threat we face from Islamic terror and the threat we face from Russia, one is theoretical, the other is real and present. So why are we not seeing that? Well, first of all, Tucker, you can't evaluate the threat just based on how many American lives have been lost. Russia is a threat to democracy. It's a threat to our way of life. Look at what Russia has done in Ukraine. It annexed Crimea. It is in eastern Ukraine. It's killed a lot of people in Ukraine. Ukraine wanted to be part of the West. It wanted to be a democracy. It wanted to join Europe. It wanted to be our ally. Russia has been threatening democracy for a long time. Okay. Look at the Cold wait, War. Wait, wait, wait. Hold Not on, a lot hold of Americans wait, hold on, but before, but we jump, before we jump back 26 years, let me just get to the discrete examples that you just listed. You say they're a threat to our way of life, to our democracy. I feel for the Ukrainians. I feel for the Crimeans. I feel for anybody whose nationalist hopes are thwarted. How is the annexation of Crimea or the conflict with Ukraine a direct threat to national security? Because if Russia is allowed to annex Ukraine, it will annex another country next. It will annex one of the Baltic states. Idaho? It'll, or annex, it'll annex two of the Baltic California? states. California? I mean, then, what, how will that affect American national security? Do you not believe that there are countries like Russia who have... Uh, who desire to undermine democracy sure, yeah, all lots, over the world, lots of them. particularly yeah. in Europe. And part of I their think strategy, I think their members part of their strategy for, to, uh, for doing that okay. is undermining democratic efforts in countries like Ukraine, okay. in the Baltic states. I'm asking you simple questions. Just give me simple answers, if you would. How is Russia's expansionist tendencies, which are shared by a lot of countries around the world, lots of countries want to be bigger. This is the story of the world, of history. 
How does Russia's behavior in Eastern and Central Europe threaten America's critical national security interests or America's democracy? Because one of the things that America has always stood for is freedom and spreading democracy around the world. And the biggest foe of freedom and the spread of democracy is Russia. And we see that now in lots of different places where Russia is an actor, particularly in Eastern Europe, where it has designs on recreating a Russian I'm empire, sure. on recreating uh, colony-type states okay. that it had when it was the USSR. Just for the hell of it, I'm going to ask the question one more time, because you didn't answer the question I asked. You basically said Russia's behavior offends our values as Americans. And I would agree with that completely. But that's not the criterion upon which we make war decisions. We go to war, we are enemies with someone when their behavior threatens our national security, something you said Russia did. So I'm going to ask you one final time. How does their behavior threaten our national security or our democracy itself, as is often the claim? I don't understand that. Okay, let's take Syria, for instance. Uh, Russia given up on Crimea and Russia, Ukraine. Well, we talked about that a lot. Okay. We, we, I, I could talk about it all hour if right. you want. But take Syria. Russia intervened in Syria in September 2015, after the Obama administration failed to act and failed to uh, punish Syria for crossing the red line. And that was a mistake. But when Russia intervened in September, it said it was intervening to fight ISIS. One week after its military and airstrikes, State Department said more than 90% of those airstrikes were against U.S.-backed forces in Syria, not against ISIS. Okay, That's so, how. so because we back a series of Islamist rebel groups, some with ties to al-Qaeda and ISIS, which we currently do, which, by the way, is insane, and because Russian bombing may have hurt some of those Islamists, that's a threat to our national security? If you could just, I know we don't have a ton of time left, but just connect the dots there for me if you would. Sure, let me connect the dots for you. We are trying to stabilize Syria. We need to stabilize Syria. More than 400,000 people have been killed in Syria. Russia is not trying, to and not trying to stabilize Syria. Russia is propping up the Assad regime, which is fueling ISIS. ISIS was born out of the crisis in Syria, the fact that no one was supporting the moderates who were opposing Assad, and the Sunni population turned to ISIS. That's what created ISIS. Boy. ISIS is a convenient foe the for Russians Russia because ISIS. Russia because ISIS is helping fight the battles that Russia wants fought. Do you think Russia I'm, cares uh, that there was an ISIS-sponsored attack in Manchester? Uh, probably that not. Russia. Probably not. But exactly. I, I guess I just, I kind of remember Syria when it was stable. And guess who ran it? Oh, the Assad family ran it. That's and correct. And so it's hard to look me in the face and say supporting a bunch of people, some of whom may be good-hearted, some may be lunatics, is making a country more stable than what it was Eight years ago, when it was run by a dictator who hated America and Israeli, bad guy, but it was stable, and now it's not. But so, like, call me stupid, but that seems like the fact. So then you agree with President Obama that we should have not done anything in Syria. Because remember, the revolution that started in Syria, the U.S. didn't start that rev revolution. Okay. That was a revolution that started on its own, and, and, and it happened. And there were forces that went against Assad, and then eventually, when we didn't do anything, Russia went in. Now we have a destabilized country that helped create ISIS. We have a humanitarian disaster that's yeah. causing refugees to flee Maybe, okay. to Europe and to the U.S. I'll tell and you we what, have more than 400,000 people. People killed. I've lost any confidence. I've about, lost especially US. any confidence I ever had in the ability of intellectuals in Washington to make the world stable. They've made it less stable, and now I'm really worried about their judgment. That's my. So now you want assessment. Russia to do it? No, I'm not saying that at all. I just I don't take any of this at face value anymore. I used to. David, thank you.